Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. So let's start today with a question. I want you to think back a little bit. I want you to kind of maybe use your imagination if you need to. When was the last time that you looked up into the nighttime sky when it was a full moon? And it was so bright and it was so brilliant. And you just kind of said to yourself, you think, how does the moon get so bright? Have you guys ever thought about that? Have you guys ever wondered about that? Or maybe you're driving, maybe you're driving with your parents and you're in a car and it's just coming up on the horizon. And you think to yourself, man, look how bright the moon is. So my question is, do you know how the moon gets its light? So think about that for a minute. I've got a verse that I want to read for you. It's our application verse. And you keep thinking about it. See if you can come up with the answer at home. Maybe ask your brother, ask your sister, ask mom or dad. See if they can tell you how the moon gets its light. So here's our application verse. It is John chapter 8, verse 12. Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So did you come up with the answer yet? Do you think you got it? If you said the moon reflects the sun, you got it. You're exactly right. Our moon reflects light from the sun. Now you may be thinking, okay, how does that have anything to do with our lesson today? Well, let's jump in here, let's dive in, and let's talk about it. So I've got another question for you. Have you had anything discouraging happen recently? Have you had anything difficult happen recently? Maybe if you're a student, maybe remote learning was tough because you missed your friends, or maybe some of the assignments were difficult because you just you didn't understand quite th you know, things quite as well as you wanted to. <clears throat> or maybe you have an older brother or sister. Maybe you have an aunt or an uncle and they weren't able to keep their job because of the quarantine that was going on. I don't know. Or maybe how about last week? with all of the rain. Did you guys experience flooding? Did you guys have flood in your basement? Did you have water in your basement? Or maybe if you are live on a farm, maybe unfortunately there was water that was in your field and now you have to do some replanting. Those are all very real life struggles. And you wonder, does the Bible talk about that? Does anybody in the Bible have to deal with struggles? And they did. And they, and so let's look at an individual today that you're probably pretty familiar with. You've probably heard of this person before. This individual was a missionary. This individual was an apostle and had very real struggles. And you might say to yourself, well, what kind of struggles? Well, think about this. This individual was a missionary, gets on a boat more than once and the boat that this individual is on starts to sink. Or the individual, this missionary, starts to talk about Jesus in town. And you know what happened to this individual? They put him in prison just for simply talking about Jesus. Do you guys know who it is? Do you think you have an idea? Well, if you said Paul, then you're right once again. The individual that we want to talk about today is Paul. We want to talk about some of the struggles. But most importantly, what we want to talk about is how did Paul respond? What did he do in the midst of those struggles? So follow along with me. Let me read a little bit for you here. And we're going to look at, as I've started to mention already, Paul went on several long trips to tell other people about Jesus. He went to start new churches. And what happened to him? He was thrown into jail because of his faith, because of his belief and his love in God. Was God with Paul when he was in jail? He sure was. And Paul knew that God was there with him. While Paul was in jail, he wrote letters to lots of different churches. And this month, we're gonna specifically look at the letter Philippians that he wrote to the church at Philippi. He taught and he encouraged the believers. Paul could have focused on him. Paul could have focused on himself, but he didn't. He knew God was with him. He knew God could continue to use him. 
even when he was in jail. Now, remember, remember Paul's in jail and he's sitting there probably alone to some degree, but he wasn't selfish and he thought about other people. And his letter that he wrote, it encouraged other people. It strengthened other people. Paul's response gave boldness to other people to go out and talk to their friends and their neighbors about Jesus. But not everybody liked Paul. And you may be thinking, why wouldn't you like Paul? Some people were envious and some people did things that seemed like they were nice and good, but they were actually trying to hurt Paul. And the question we keep wanting to come back to today is how did Paul respond? Paul said it didn't matter what other people's motives were. Okay? The situation was for God's glory and to spread the good news about Jesus. If Paul hadn't been in prison, so think about this for a minute. If Paul hadn't put it, been put in prison, the gospel probably would not have spread the way that it did. And sometimes we need to think about that. We need to realize what Paul did. Sometimes we have to stop in our storms of life and say, okay, how can God be honored? How can God be glorified in this? And because Romans 8.28 reminds us that all these things are gonna work together for good, for those who love God and for, and <clears throat> for those who want to do His will. Now you may be hearing this and you may be thinking, but I'm not Paul. I'm nowhere near Paul. But let me talk to you for a moment though about Paul's testimony. Because Paul wasn't always known as Paul. Do you guys know what he was known as? I'm gonna give you a minute there. Ask your brother or sister sitting there with you. Ask mom, maybe hit pause, go ask dad. Say, hey, what was Paul known as before? And while you do that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a, um, an illustration here. So did you come up with it? Do you think you know what Paul was known as before? Because this was Paul right here. Paul was somebody that was mad with Christians. And I know you might not have heard that story before. Paul, that wasn't even his name. Right here, if you, if you could go back in time, this individual would have been known as Saul. And Saul's job was to get Christians in trouble, actually to arrest them, even to put them in jail, and even worse. But God got Paul's attention right here. It's called the road to Damascus, and there was a blinding light. So much so that, well, his name was Saul at the time. Couldn't even see. He had to have help. And he was that way for a few days. And he came out of this situation and no longer was his name Saul. He was a missionary to Greek people. And so they looked at, they took his Saul name and they referred to him now as Paul, because that's how it was translated. And that's how he started becoming the missionary. And so you may be thinking today, what is my testimony? And don't think for a moment that just because you haven't handled situations well in the past, that you can't start handling situations well now. Let's look at a couple words. How could we describe the way Paul handled situations? He was humble, he was forgiving, and he was patient. How was he humble? God was not being, you know, God didn't give Paul all these great things. As I said, he was shipwrecked, and Paul said that's okay. God gave Paul a thorn in the flesh, and Paul continued to work. There were people that were not nice to Paul. They were envious of Paul, and he was forgiving of them. And Paul continued to be patient and continued to work through very difficult circumstances in the way God, in the, how God wanted him to work. Let me read just a little bit more for you today as we wrap it up, as we, as we finish up this lesson. It says, Jesus is the light when things around us seem dark. And it can be a little bit frightening to be in the light. 
and maybe you're still at a, maybe you're at a point in time where even being outside sometimes is a little bit frightening at, at nighttime. Could I just encourage you, look up into that beautiful nighttime sky, and if it's a full moon, or maybe if it's even just a crescent moon, and recognize that the sun that God created has shown its light into the moon, and it is reflecting the sun, the sun that God created. And we can do the same thing. We can reflect the sun. If you could see the back of my shirt, the front of my shirt says, be the moon. And on the back of my shirt, there is a cross, but it doesn't say S-U-N, it says S-O-N, the son of God. And could I just encourage you today to, in those difficult times, in those discouraging times, just like Paul, know that Jesus is with you, boys and girls. Know that he hasn't left you. It may be dark, but God is there and he always will be and he loves you, and he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. That's how much he loves you. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and continue to reflect Jesus as you live.